Welcome back to My Time to Fly. I know it's been a couple minutes since I put a video out. I think I'm in a good spot now where I can turn back to making some great general aviation content, and I'm thankful you're here. So in my last video, I took a trip from my home airport, Sparta, to Iron Mountain. It was really a great trip. It worked perfectly for the work I needed to do that day, and I want to come back and highlight the efficiencies of that trip. In this video, I intend to compare my different options in transportation. I could have easily taken a car or flown commercially, but I want to kind of show you how this trip worked so well with general aviation, maybe one of the best of any that I've taken, and show you the other options. Again, there's a lot of content coming up. I'm headed to Oshkosh next week, again, for work. Our company will have a booth set up. And the Mooney is in annual right now, so I don't think I'm going to be able to take it to Oshkosh. But as soon as it's out of annual, we'll get flying again and get some new content headed your way. So enjoy the comparison. Hopefully it shows you how efficient flying can be in general aviation, although it might not always be. Hopefully I can highlight some of the real benefits. So while we do that, enjoy some video from the trip. All right, like I mentioned, in my last video, I found myself on an amazing trip across Lake Michigan in the Mooney. This was my first time crossing what we call the Big Lake, which of course provided a bit of excitement. Along with that extra shot of adrenaline, I found some incredible efficiency leveraging the water crossing. Today, I'll detail the huge advantage general aviation provided for this trip. I'll compare flying the Mooney to the two quote unquote normal options, driving and flying commercially. I'll break it down into three categories and rate each option on a scale from one to five. Number one, simplicity. Two, total travel time. And of course, the big one, cost. Hey, given these three options, do me a favor. Drop a comment below. How would you have chosen to take this trip? Did taking the Mooney in general aviation make most sense to you? Or is there something that stood out as a better option? All right, so let's talk simplicity. And we'll start with driving. You think driving is simple, right? There's just not too much to think about. For most of us, we just jump in the car and go. In this case, there were a couple route options to consider. Through the Upper Peninsula of Michigan or through Chicago. The UP route was likely relaxing where driving through Chicago can be stressful and full of delays. You also need to consider the total time involved in driving, which we'll dig into a bit more later, and how long the meeting might take. Together, that should help you decide if you can make the trip in one day. If you can't make the round trip in one day, it certainly adds to the complexity. You'll have to find a hotel, pack for the overnight, bring food, find places to eat. You know, it all adds up. Everyone certainly has a different threshold, but I tend to believe that road trips over the 14 hour mark start to require an overnight. In this case, I would surpass my threshold, so the complexity of the drive ratchets up a bit. Don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near unmanageable. It just adds to the planning. Overall, I give driving a three out of five on the complexity scale. All right, we'll switch gears to flying commercially. There have been many times in history when I'd say commercial air travel is simple. You show up, you get scanned, you board the plane and go. It seems today though, you have to also pray that your flight doesn't get canceled or delayed. All while waiting through each airline's specific baggage policies and fee structures. Fortunately for me, I have a wonderfully simple airport to fly out of in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But the reality is, flying commercially has become more complicated. Specific to this trip, the flight would be fairly simple, and an easy decision as there is only one flight in and out of Iron Mountain each day. I would depart from Grand Rapids, Gerald R. Ford International Airport in the morning, and head to Detroit to connect to the flight up to Iron Mountain. I would then make the same trip in reverse in the afternoon. We'll talk more about the total travel time coming up, but from a simplicity standpoint, the only thing that would make this trip easier would be a direct flight. 
Being such a short trip, I wouldn't have to check any bags, and parking at Grand Rapids is simple. So all in all, commercial travel, I give about a 2 out of 5 in simplicity. Pretty straightforward. For general aviation, of course, I'm a little biased. But I tend to believe that flying the Mooney is one of the simplest options. I get to fly directly to the airport I want to, which is the same airport that commercial flights fly to. Of course, there's no parking fees flying out of a small airport, and I get to choose my route. It's a direct crossing. There's a little bit of complication in having to choose where to cross the big lake and uh, how high to cross, and of course, the normal planning that goes into flying. I don't think it's overly complicated, but I definitely think it's more complicated than flying commercially, and I would typically say more complicated than driving, but given, uh, given that this trip could be made in one day and it's the same route there and back, I'm also going to give general aviation flying a 3 out of 5. Next up, we'll talk about total travel time. As we talk about total time, let's understand that there's some flexibility in our meeting times, departure times, all that stuff. So I've tried to pick the best scenario for each option, driving, commercial flight, and general aviation flying. So driving. As I mentioned before, there are two solid options for the drive. Each ends up being about seven hours of drive time. Figure a stop or two along the way for fuel, food, bathroom breaks. It quickly turns into eight hours each way. Assuming a three-hour meeting at my vendor, we'd hit 19 hours if we attempted to do it in one day. As this surpasses my threshold, we'll split it up into two days. Day one, I'd plan to depart home around 6 a.m. to arrive at the vendor close to 2 o'clock. We'd have meetings, maybe have dinner, I'd find my hotel, spend the night. Then on day two, I'd turn right back around, again, 6 a.m. departure, arrive home around 2 o'clock. This results in a trip of about 32 hours. Sure, there's ways to shorten the trip, but at minimum, if you did it in one day, you're still looking at 18 hours of travel time. Flying commercially is quite straightforward, assuming there's no delays. The first flight departs from Grand Rapids at 6.30 a.m., and I live about 30 minutes from the airport, so here's my timeline. Depart home around 5 a.m., catch my flight from Grand Rapids at 6.30, have a quick layover in Detroit, at 8.25, I'd depart Detroit for Iron Mountain and arrive at 8.45. We'd have all the meetings wrapped up by lunchtime, and I'd have about three hours left until my return trip begins. The departure in Iron Mountain is about 5 o'clock. There's a three-hour layover in Detroit. And then I'd depart Detroit around 11 o'clock and arrive home into the Grand Rapids Airport, 11.56. And by the time I get off the plane and get in my car 30 minutes home it's surely 1245 that's 21 hours of travel time to fly commercially now one argument could be made it's all hands off you can be productive while you're in the airport or on the airplane that's easier and easier in today's world but still 21 hours away from home so switching to general aviation here's my timeline I leave home about 7 o'clock. Don't wake up super early. Leave home at my normal time, 7 o'clock. Drive 30 minutes to the airport. I give myself about 45 minutes to get the airplane ready, pre-flighted, fired up, and in the air. So we're off the ground about 8.15. It's an hour and a half flight to Iron Mountain, so I'm in Iron Mountain by 9.45. After three hours of meetings and a quick bite to eat, I'm back in the Mooney at 2 o'clock, headed home. I touch down at 3.30, put the airplane away, probably fuel it up, it's the nice thing to do, and I'm back home by 4.30. Nine and a half hours in the Mooney. It's just unbeatable. Now the reason it's unbeatable on this trip is certainly the lake in the middle. If that lake wasn't there or there was a bridge long enough to cross it, driving becomes much easier. But in, in this case, you can't beat general aviation from a time perspective. All right, finally, let's talk about cost. 
I didn't go do super deep research to find out exactly how much every ounce of this trip's going to cost, but we'll just break it down into the known costs and use some approximations. So driving the trip is about 450 miles each way, so 900 miles. Let's consider I have a vehicle that gets good gas mileage, decently good mileage, 30 miles a gallon, right? So I'm going to use 30 gallons of gas to get there and back. We'll just use 450 a gallon for gas. So 30 gallons at 450 a gallon is $135. Figure a hotel for one night is another $150. So we're at 285. Of course, we'll have lunch, dinner, breakfast again. So another $60 in meals. You know, you're about $350 to do the round trip driving. And again, away for two days. Flying commercially, again, pretty straightforward. As long as you look a couple weeks out, you're going to pay about the same fare. It's $444 in airfare and $10 in parking if you keep it uh, less than 24 hours at G Gerald R. Ford, my airport. So all told, you're about $450 to fly commercially. You know, maybe it's one extra meal over general aviation because you're gone deeper into the evening, but you know, I think that's being a bit too particular on pricing. In general aviation, there are a lot of ways to think about cost. And don't kid yourself, we'll find whatever we think is mm, the best appearing on paper. So I'll split it up into a couple different options. So the first option is just to look at your flight time and how much you charge yourself. So let's just say we charge ourselves $100 an hour. There was a time recently we charged ourselves less, but with fuel prices climbing, we charge ourselves $100 an hour to fly the airplane. It was three hours of flight time on the nose, 300 bucks round trip. Pretty straightforward. If you really wanted to look at the price and you know talk somebody into letting you fly, I filled up at both Iron Mountain when I arrived and back at Sparta when I got back. I paid $94.40 uh, in, in Iron Mountain and $89.84 in Sparta when I returned. So my actual total fuel cost was only $184.24. You know, call it 10 bucks in oil to go along with that. All told, this is again one of those unique scenarios where the time saved and the efficiency in uh, going over the lake, cutting the corner, so to speak, ended up in a lower overall cost. So all told, I was super happy to use the Mooney on this trip. Not only uh, did it give me a purpose for using the airplane, it also took time off the trip, really shortened my day, and ended up saving uh, money all around. So again, this is an example that might not fit every time, but I would encourage you to always be looking for opportunities to fly. We all need that mission in our lives to keep that general aviation bug hot. Um, going up and flying in circles is fun for a while, but you have to find a reason to go out there and use the airplane. So that's all I have for today. I appreciate you being here on My Time to Fly. Again, a bunch more content coming up as we get into Oshkosh and get the airplane back from annual and start getting back in the air. So do yourself a favor. Whether you've flown before or you're just thinking about getting up in the air, go to your local airport and find your time to fly.